Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have this 2022 Genesis G70 Sport Prestige. And in this review, we're gonna take a look at all the exterior lights, the interior controls and lighting, and get it out on the road so you can see just how well these lights do. All right, let's take a look at these exterior lights first. So this no longer has adaptive lighting, and I'll talk about the lighting in a little bit, but we've got this all new quad LED lighting as standard. So LED high and low beams paired with this massive grill and mesh pattern with this Sport Prestige model. You'll see with this headlight over here, we've got the daytime running light running in between those headlight housings. And then on this side, the blinker takes over where that headlight housing or where the daytime running light is. And you've got the blinker in the mirror, but you're not gonna have any fog lights. The paint color on this G70 is called Siberian Ice, and I like it. I think it's pretty cool. It's kind of a creamy grayish, whitish color paired with these accents and 19 inch wheels. What do you think? Then coming to the back, now keep in mind, I have a daytime review to follow with a bunch more details but you've got that same quad LED design. I like the way that they look with those lines up above and below, and those are red blinkers. You can see the mirror from back here, and then you've got LED license plate lights. This is kind of a classic look back here with these tail lights. What do you think? And then let's take a look at the super low reverse lights and brake lights. All right, y'all watch this. With the key fob, you can even turn the lights on. So that is actually kind of nice. But if I lock it, and then with the everything except the base model, as you approach it, watch this. The mirror's gonna power unfold, the door handle's going to illuminate, and you're gonna get this pretty sweet Genesis emblem on the ground. So that's a really nice big emblem with this nice entry lighting. Now moving to the interior, you're gonna find some backlit illuminated controls and a nice interior overall, but we're lacking one kind of main thing that I was expecting in here. First of all, on the door, your memory settings are nicely lit. And then you've got all your window switches and lock controls and mirror controls. Everything has a light to it. There's no lighting in the door pocket, but as you can see down by my feet, there are there is some footwell lighting on both sides. Next to the steering wheel, you'll find interior brightness controls, that plus minus on the left. Not only does it dim this display, but it also dims and brightens your actual button controls. So if you look at like the climate controls, those can dim and brighten and the camera adjusts pretty quickly, but you can see how much everything dims and brightens pretty quickly, even the screen somewhat. But right in front of us, you've got a digital display in the middle there, an eight inch display. That's actually standard. There's no big digital display. It shows you a good amount of information, but I was expecting a bigger digital display. And then overhead, you got this head up display on this Sport Prestige model as well. And with this 10 and a quarter inch display, this is actually standard also. And one thing I'm gonna show you right away, let's kind of go into the control. So if I go to setup, go to vehicle, get to the light controls, because that's what this video is mainly about, go to lights, and then you can turn off your high beam assist, so your automatic high beams right there. You can also do it by using the high beam stock off and on. And then if I go to set up again, go to display, this is something that I really like about Genesis and Hyundai is the blue light filter. So if you're familiar with blue light or buttons, uh, things on your phone like night mode or things to turn the blue lights off or help illuminate the blue lights, you can do that on this screen so that this screen isn't quite so disruptive and you know stimulating at night. So you can adjust that if you want and the screen illumination on here as well. The screen is very easy to use. There's quite a bit that you can customize. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, even though it has to be wired, not wireless, at the time of this video. Down here, you still get some illuminated backlit controls, even the volume knob and tuning knob. Same with the uh, heated and ventilated seats. Everything looks pretty nice. Dual zone climate control. I really have no complaints with the lighting there. Below that, you've got a backlit USB port and a wireless charging mat as well. There's just no ambient lighting in there. As we come down to the center console, you'll see a little bit of a glow right here. That's because there's a little tiny bit of overhead light that kind of shines down on the center area. So that is nice, but you're not gonna find any colored ambient lighting or ambient lighting in the door pockets or dash like you find on the GV70 and even some other competitors. So if you're looking for that, be sure to check out the GV70, the SUV from Genesis. I got a video covering that and it looks pretty cool. But take a look at this, drive mode button, your parking brake, things like that. Nicely illuminated down there, and then even the cup holder's a little bit. 
In here, I'm also surprised not to see a light inside of this storage area. Really surprising for a luxury brand. The glove box is nice and bright though and softly lined. Overhead, you get an automatic dimming rear view mirror. This is not a frameless mirror, but I actually like that because the entire mirror is going to be automatic dimming. The other thing is that both of these rear view mirrors are actually automatic dimming on both sides, so that's great. The last thing, overhead, you've got two LED lights up here that have a nice fade in and fade out, each individual map light here. This button on the right is to dictate whether or not the light turns on when you open the door. And the thing about these lights is they're kind of like spotlights into certain areas. So if you lose something in a corner or something, it's going to be kind of hard to find because it doesn't illuminate except pretty much right in your lap. As you can see, it's not a big broadcast light, but it is still very bright. Now let's take a good look at these headlights and the beam pattern on the wall with the high and the low beams. The beam pattern is pretty strong from left to right, but there's no adaptive function left to right and also no cornering lights, which is a bit of a surprise for this top end model, but they do still get the best possible rating from the IIHS as you can see here, but let's go ahead and get them out on the road. All right, y'all, we're getting going in this G70 night drive. So. If you want to see a full daytime review, I will have one coming out shortly after this video with more details on the driving impressions. This is going to be more about how well the lights do and what it's like to drive the Genesis at night. So as you saw, the G70 gets the best overall rating for headlights. We're going to put those to the test on some somewhat lit roads and some darker roads and corners as well. So let's take a look and see how they do. But first, Let's talk a little bit, just a little bit about this 3.3 liter twin turbo. How about a little Sport Plus? Pedal down. Zoom, zoom. It's fun, it's fast, and it's aggressive in this Sport Plus mode. A little bit more of that in the test drive. But we're gonna stay in comfort mode now. And like I mentioned just a little bit ago, the Rear view mirror is automatic dimming and both side mirrors are automatic dimming as well, which is just awesome. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flick the automatic high beams on. I just move the stock forward like you're turning on high beams. And so far, you know, with the overhead street lights, it's still just the low beams. And the low beams are definitely bright enough to where I can really actually see the cutoff line of the low beam headlights. And we'll uh, get out on a dark road in just a sec. All right, and this whole time I've had the automatic high beams on on this road for the last couple minutes with the overhead lights, and it still just stayed on the low beams regardless of if someone was in the oncoming lane or not. But now we're gonna get on a dark road where you can hopefully get a better idea of what these beam patterns are like. So the high beams just kicked on. I'll let you know when they're on and when they're not. And they've got great distance down into that corner. Let me turn them off. And you can see the beam pattern. There is a dip on the oncoming side, which is supposed to be there. And as we level out, they shoot straight into that corner. I hit that pretty quick. I turned the high beams on because a car was coming and it turned them off. So that's great. And now high beams kick back on. There's no cornering or adaptive function here. I really wish there was, I'm kind of surprised, but these are still doing a pretty good job illuminating the road up ahead. High beams are on. I'm gonna turn the high beams off, and the low beam pattern is still pretty solid. I can see the reflectors quite a ways up the road, and it illuminates my lane very well. High beams, high beams are bright, and they're not too narrow either. These, these are doing a nice job. Now I'm gonna turn the automatic high beams on again. And even cornering to the right, I can see somewhat up that line, the white line on the side of the road pretty well with the high beams on. Still the high beams. The cornering is okay. Let's see if this light shuts them off. Oh, oncoming traffic and they just shut off right away. So they are responsive. I haven't been blinded by anybody or haven't been, uh, you know, flashed by anyone. We'll see if these people do, but low beams are on. Beam pattern is still good. I'll give you a better look in just a sec. And High beams just kicked back on right after that car went by. A couple seconds later, but still not bad. Now, off into the ditches. 
the width is still good about as good as you can expect with just regular headlights there's no fog light so you don't get that extra wide peripheral vision but let's see how it is on this narrow road so you can see the beam pattern up on the trees on the left solid beam pattern even straight out ahead high beams on what do you all think of that these headlights are not going to blow anybody away but they're still very good you know there's no special function to them the automatic high beam function works well the low end high beams are both bright with good distance I like it I like the way they look and the ambiance in here is still good I wish that we had a little more ambient lighting available like some little colors or accents in the door or something like that but you know you can't get everything can you I mean you still get a lot with this car and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are so let me know down below what do you think of this sport prestige i've got another video full review coming out pretty soon if you want to see that but thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up otherwise have a great night